More than 12,000 years ago, our ancestors traveled into pitch black caves to create and leave behind prophetic visions for future generations. The grandeur and beauty of these paintings that they have left behind have long intrigued scholars. How did they make these spectacular works of art? What do these works of art reveal about our ancestors? And ultimately, what were our ancestors trying to tell us? 1,200 years ago, humans from across the globe started to gather together to make paintings, sculptures, and various forms of artistic works. There are cave paintings across the globe, including in the modern Americas, Europe, Africa, and Asia. There is remarkable continuity between these cave paintings. However, there are a few key differences between them as well. The central Indian caves in Madhya Pradesh share some similarities with caves in places like southern France, but also exhibit some particularly unusual characteristics. Understanding these unusual features and why they are there requires us to travel back in time thousands of years ago to the end of the Paleolithic period, the era in which these paintings were first created. But what was Earth like 12,000 years ago? Our world today is one where artificial technologies proliferate and light up the once dark skies that hung overhead. Electricity has given us the ability to illuminate nearly every space across the globe. As satellites high above the earth, looking down, capture a sea of never-ending light spreading across the globe. We need to set back the clock and travel back into time to the end of the Paleolithic period. The world looked much different than today. Without electricity, the world at night was cast into darkness. Our ancestors had a familiarity with this darkness. In fact, they made the dark caves that surrounded them the very site where they would create the greatest works of art that the world has ever seen before. Close off the lights and surround yourself in this darkness as our ancestors did once before. Welcome to 10,000 BCE. Pause the video and turn all the lights off around you. Now that you have turned the lights off, listen. What do you hear? Even in the darkness, you were never alone. In 10,000 BCE, our ancestors would have heard the constant noises, grunts, and groans, the millions of animals that surrounded them. Many of these animals were not benevolent, but in fact posed dangerous threats to our ancestors, as the threat of animal attacks was all too real. Scholars have even suggested that animal attacks were the number one cause of death. Thus hearing these noises, our ancestors would have been afraid, yet they would also marvel in wonder and awe at the size, scope, and scale of the animal world. But there was something else besides animals which intrigued our ancestors. Fire. By 10,000 BCE, our ancestors had conquered the technology of fire and created sophisticated new technologies to create fire on demand. For the first time in human history, humans could illuminate the darkest of spaces. Entering the darkness of caves, our ancestors would have been guided by their new technologies of fire, which would have illuminated the darkest of crevices and allowed them for the first time in history to 
create in spaces which were once deemed off limits to humans. In fact, our ancestors believed that caves were the spaces of the gods, for only the gods could make light out of darkness. But now we humans could finally compete with the gods and do as they had done before, and illuminate these darkest of spaces. Thus these cave paintings are our first attempt at being and becoming like gods, and celebrating the very technologies which allowed these paintings to exist in the first place. Thus, as we travel through these dark halls and spaces, it is important to remember that these would have been celebratory events and spaces, ones where humans would be portraying themselves as gods. But while we might have figured out how to create fire on demand, something which only the gods alone could achieve, it is important to recognize as we look at these first cave paintings that there is something odd about them there's something almost missing. One of the first things you notice in these cave paintings is that there aren't very many humans. While our ancestors could have depicted themselves in these paintings, we see very little depictions of humans, and instead we see a focus on animals, on the diversity of animals which surrounded humans. This is not unique to the cave paintings in central India, but cave paintings in other locations, such as southern France, show a similar pattern. This intent focus on animals indicates that while our ancestors might have figured out how to conquer fire, still animals ruled the world around them, and their primary fear and cause of death was animal attacks as one painting in the cave depicts with graphic detail, animals would commonly attack and kill humans. However, rather than merely fear animals, it also indicates a respect and reverence for animals, as humans spent hours dedicated to depicting animals in painstaking detail. Our current world has been so depleted of large mammals that it's difficult for us today to imagine what a world filled with large mammals would have looked like. From the cave paintings, we can tell that mammals and large animals were everywhere and pervasive within the lives of humans. It's also clear that humans did not see themselves as separate or different from animals and the carnivores that surround them, but in fact saw themselves as kin. The care and attention that they devote to animals indicates that they cared for them as they did their own children. Humans do not take center stage, but the rich and diverse animal world that surrounded humans is where they find meaning and identity. In addition to animals, we found many paintings and references to dance. It's clear from the cave paintings that humans like to gather together make music and dance. Like the cave paintings in central India, the cave paintings in southern France also show images and references to dance. We often see references to patterns of small dots on the wall. While it remains somewhat controversial among scholars what these dots refer to, many suggest that they are the early formation of rhythm and beat and humans are counting the beats to the dance. It is for this reason that many scholars believe that dance and music were the original languages that humans used to communicate with each other. For example, William McNeil, in his monograph entitled Keeping Together in Time, suggests that dance was the original language that humans developed to communicate. This reveals a number of important details about humans in 10,000 BCE, such as the fact that dance, unlike other mediums of communication, require multiple people. 
In fact, the cave paintings themselves point to this fact about our ancestors, and that these cave paintings were likely done by multiple people. Some have suggested anywhere from hundreds to a thousand. Because think about the crew that would be necessary. First, you'd need people to build the basic infrastructure and scaffolding to climb on top of in order to make these paintings, because many of these paintings are stretch all the way from the top of the ceiling to the bottom of the floor. So it would have been a large team effort. And in fact, it wasn't just a team effort, but it's one that took place over time. So we see within these cave paintings that originally uh, the original artwork was done and then humans came back over a series of 100 to sometimes 200 years to add to the original paintings. This ability to gather together and celebrate is what scholars believed allowed humans to evolve and evolve to the point where animal attacks were no longer the greatest threat to them. It's pretty remarkable when you think about the fact that humans should not be at the top of the food chain and that we don't have very large teeth, we can't run fast, we don't have the ability to survive oftentimes in multiple environments just based on the restraints of our body, yet only by working collaboratively together were we able to overcome all the odds and challenges that we faced and become that which we are today. These cave paintings reveal to us this prophecy for us today. For it is only by gathering together and celebrating that we will be able to continue to learn, change, evolve, and accomplish what we could only dream of. And ultimately, gathering together and putting our differences behind us will require a certain degree of modesty and humility. Just like our ancestors before us, we must understand our position and where we stand in the scheme of things, which is not very high. We should embrace that and embrace our weaknesses and the realities of human frailty when facing their smallness and frailty in the face of much larger animals. Our ancestors laughed about it and used it as an opportunity to come together. As we face grand challenges in the future, which expose our own frailty, we will need to remember this prophecy and recognize that ultimately our frailty and weakness is a divine gift which allows us to gather together and illuminate the darkest of caves to paint and illuminate our dreams for generations to come. <laughs>